Welcome back to the channel guys. So as you know previously in the most recent CER video, the engine on this thing is 100% good. Now the bad news is I put the stator cover in wrong. There's a little grommet on the right side of it and I didn't fit that in correctly. So it is dripping oil down there, but we have started collecting a lot of parts for this thing. I've got the gas tank and the whole rear frame along with this rear plastic cowl that goes underneath the frame. But what I'm gonna start off with is a good buddy of mine let me borrow his tap and die set because here on this swing arm, this hole right here on the swing arm is all scratched up and this is where you place a little knob so that the stand can hook onto the swing arm and lift up the rear tire. I was looking at swing arms online and a used one with unknown damage is anywhere from 100 to $600 and a brand new one is $1,600. I'm definitely not gonna go that route. From what I can tell, the swing arm is in good condition. So I'm gonna tap that hole, get the stand on because I need this bottom block that the shock is actually on because I gotta do some work on this Ducati right here. In my last Ducati video, one of you guys pointed out that my forks on the bike were not aligned properly. So what I did is I completely tore down the front of this bike, unbolted all six bolts on the lower triple tree, unbolted the upper triple tree, and aligned those forks perfectly. I also bought bolt replacements for the six bolts down here because some of them were messed up and some of them were almost about to be stripped out. And that's not good if I ever need to replace these forks. So I replaced those and now this bike is ready to be torqued down and put back together. Let me tell you, it was a lot easier putting that thing back together the second time than the first time. But I'm gonna move on to this tail tidy kit and I'm gonna show you guys how this thing installs on the back of the bike. Now that that's unlocked, I can access the wires that are underneath this seat, which will plug right into this tail tidy kit. Underneath this flap, there we go. There are the three wires that I need. Three wires on this piece. It's gonna have these two long screws go all the way through and go through those two holes. This plate will sit on top of those two screws securing the back bracket. This kit, you can adjust different areas for the license plate. So cop mode and then no cop mode. Totally kidding, but now let's put together the rest of the Ducati, get it ready for that inspection and move on to the CBR. The bike is 100% inspection ready. I've got mirrors, signals on both ends, and a license plate bracket. And that's pretty much all I need for this inspection besides just the bike being all put together. But it's pretty late here tonight, so tomorrow we're gonna go full steam on this bike, start ripping things apart as I have new parts coming in. And look at what we have here. Two big packages, and look at that. Honda Genuine Parts. I can't wait to rip these open and show you guys what I got.
brand new OEM fuel tank has arrived as well as the front stay bracket for the screen and also the rear plastic cowl and the frame cowl itself. Now I believe that plastic cowl slips in the metal frame cowl here, but I'm gonna start off with that gas tank, removing the fuel pump and everything else on this old gas tank and swapping it over. actually rewatch me taking the pump out of the old tank and putting it into this new one because there's a special orientation that this piece the pump goes it's supposed to angle this direction so that that line can connect right in it this little arrow that you see on this silver piece right there there's only one arrow on that it actually lines up with the arrow on this fuel tank which i was like what the heck is that for but now i've got this all situated correctly i'm going to tighten it down and move on to the top cap which is sitting right there Finally figured out how this plastic piece inserts in the subframe back here, but I've got a ton of wiring to figure out back here as well. I slapped in the front stay frame just to see how it fits. Now I can't put the headlight in because that actually clips onto the fairings. So I'm waiting for the fairings to come in, but for now this is all I can do up front. But in the rear, this is where I'm gonna work on all the wiring I need to figure out because all these modules go certain places with certain bolts on certain pieces. And I'm gonna go through all my old parts over there and figure that out as well. The bike is actually starting to look like a bike again. It's got the rear subframe in, all the big components are on the bike. Now I'm just needing to get two wheels, one for the front and the rear, but those are pretty expensive. But I'm holding off on those for now, but I'm looking for a good deal or maybe I'll just go OEM. All these lines I need to run up into the plastic piece under here. Like this box inserts underneath this, right in that place. But actually right now, I need to fix my mistake on the stator cover. As you can see, oil is dripping a little bit down there right in here. I didn't secure that boot well enough. So I'm gonna need to take off this stator cover, put oil back in the bike and fire it up. Now this rubber grommet is actually because wires run through here into the alternator inside the stator cover because there's really no way I guess for them to run it through the block. So they just go right through the stator cover and use a rubber grommet so that no oil leaks out. So that's why I didn't have placed correctly last time but it's good now. I've got gasket sealer, new gasket sealer after I scraped off all the old stuff. So now I'm going to find the torque settings for all of these bolts around the stator cover. Going to let this sit for a few hours then I'm going to get some radiator fluid and actually fill it up on this side because one of you guys mentioned that I actually need to fill it up through here. I don't know what I was thinking when I thought I could fill it up through in the back. So I'm gonna fill it up through here and we're gonna let this bike run a little bit longer than we did last time. So we're gonna let the stator cover dry for a few hours, then we'll be back to fill up this bike with radiator fluid and oil and let it run.
put radiator fluid in the bike. It keeps bubbling up, so we'll have to run it through, cycle through, get all the air out of the system. I put all of the expensive Mobile One Racing oil back into the motor using a filter. Now it's time to fire it up. Key is on. Now we just need to push the start button. Primed. Oh, I didn't connect my... I forgot to connect these lines, that's important. Probably shouldn't have been so eager. These lines are back in. I don't know if they play a big role in it starting. Try again. We might just be so low on fuel. Let me put some more fuel on this thing. Let's prime it again. That sounded different. That sounds promising. All right, we'll give her a crank. Before I run it too long, I stopped the bike because I actually want to find, yeah, there we go, coolant temp. Look at that, it has an auto dimming feature. is slowly starting to not dribble down anymore. It's pretty steady. That fuel was the issue. I put new fuel in it, more fuel, and it really, it primed the pump way better. So it actually fired up. Now I'm gonna run it again, see if I can run it for longer because I got this up to about 190 degrees with the coolant, but it was rising really, really fast. So I stopped the bike, put more coolant in it. Now let's run it again. staying pretty steady but it did just start to bog down because i'm running out of gas so let me put more gas in it so we can run it after running the bike for a little bit the coolant level stayed pretty normal and i did find only one small little leak right here on this hose it was a little farther out now i'm not sure if this actually caused the leak of all the coolant because i'm still curious on how all the coolant in this system leaked out i haven't found any leaks right now after running it for a while puddle right over there of coolant is actually from it's from these drain hoses right here that drain if there's overflow of coolant in the system i believe so that's the only coolant on the floor and there are zero leaks from the stator cover so i did my job correctly this time around. I'm gonna need to order one of those special radiator hose clamps from Honda. I'm very happy with the progress so far on the bike and I'm really looking forward to seeing the new fairings coming in. I'm excited to show you guys. So we'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.